Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And so I'm watching the show, your new favorite pop culture YouTube channel, where we talk about movies, TV, music, and more. I wanted to record an intro because we're going to release some very old test footage of ours ah. that was Riverdale. We covered season one and two of Riverdale. And because we have had so much fun with that show, for better and worse, <laughs> and because it's been one of some of our most popular content, I was like, we've got this footage. It's not great like our audio is bad yeah. we look different there is no set yeah. but i think ultimately at the end of the day i think the conversation is good mm -hmm. and i think it's it, it, it's worth releasing it's in my old dining room <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we're definitely gonna release season two and that's what this is this is just a, a little intro for our riverdale season two content so you gotta have options ah, I see. <laughs> so please do enjoy Okay, um, well, for starters, it is the 4th of July mm -hmm. when we're recording this. Mm -hmm. So if there are booms and or <laughs> it is the uh, celebration happening. So season two, episode 20, Shadow of a Doubt. Uh, do we still have a doubt? <laughs> No, I have no doubts. Well, we have no doubts. <laughs> Even when we were watching the first time, I was like pretty sure. Okay, but it was like last episode we were like, so are, are we there? Do we know who it is? And then yeah. this episode was like... No, yeah, we know who it is. Who had, in fact, laid eyes on the Black Hood and suspected he was much closer. Penny, for your thoughts on... It's Hal. It's Hal Cooper. He's the Black Hood. Obviously. Who's his accomplice? I don't remember. I don't either. The one that's shooting in this yeah. episode? I don't remember either. Because that is the thing is I was like, well, maybe it's still multiple parents, mm -hmm. but I don't remember who that was, actually. So. I don't know. Anybody who's friends with Reggie, apparently. Gestures lazily. <laughs> well, do you want to start with that? You said remind you that you had something to say about Reggie. Well, now I have many things to say okay. about Reggie. But the thing I wanted to say was like, maybe not even like 15 minutes into this episode, they were like going to do something the dark circle was going to do something and oh the, when they were going to beat up the serpents mm -hmm. at the white worm and reggie was like all right guys let's do this and they all pull masks down over their face while they're wearing their letterman jackets with their literal <laughs> names right on them all right war dogs let's have some fun <laughs> I just like Reggie is so hot and he is dumber than a box of rocks he's dumber than Archie because at least Archie has like a passing understanding of things that are happening at I, I wish I had written down that that monologue Veronica delivered in the beginning oh of my this because she said word of my exploit serving Nick has come up and has seeped into the demimond of mobsters and malls my father used to associate with Demi Mond of mobsters and malls. malls. Yeah. And she went into the, like, she kept going. And they just cut to Actually, KJ they cut Apa. To Archie and he's just kind of, and he's like, looking, looking up at up, her. Up, <laughs> but his eyes go like this way, away from her. Like he he's just goes, trying to follow the words as they come out of her mouth. <laughs> and she just keeps going. And then on top of that, Cheryl Blossom. This entire episode. She, I love, my favorite thing about Cheryl is that she speaks like a Victorian waif. <laughs> it's just like a Dickens, like a full Dickens novel. Having observed your pater yeah. tiptoe all through this house like a marshmallow, I was like, what? It's hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> it just, and we've said this several times, and we're going to keep saying it, damn it. Yeah. Uh, she's, Cheryl is such a... A wild card. If ever there were a wild card in a show, it mm -hmm. is Cheryl Blossom. She really is the writer's just like Swiss Army knife. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Whatever they need, they can find a way like, to. Look, in this episode, Veronica and Jughead are both busy with outside things, but Betty needs a. An she accomplice. could so conceivably have to do an entire episode where she's like on a road trip with Fred. And yeah. I'd be like, oh, yeah, well, no, it makes they'll sense. learn this. <laughs> and, 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 I, I dig it. I buy it. Um, and it Vegas. Works. You yeah. know? Yeah, and Vegas. <laughs> but because she's like Betty's sidekick this entire episode, and she's so like 
understanding yeah. and available and like nurturing. And like and, down a clown yeah. with all of this like nonsense. Please too. tell me we're going to break in. Yeah. Like, yeah. She's like ride or die for Betty in this episode in a way that Betty. like does not it's not consistent. It's like, I almost wish that they had gone ahead and hit the metaphor even stronger and just, like, given her medication for something. Mm. And it's like, this is medicated, medicated Cheryl. Cheryl. Like, <laughs> this is Cheryl on Nana Rose's specialty. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so that was hilarious to me. Uh, they're really milking this. We've finally gone ahead and just said it. It's Hal. Mm -hmm. But they're... I, I guess... At this point, I don't understand the dance Hal is dancing. Mm. Because Betty calls him out. Mm -hmm. She hints at it heavily. And then she literally is like, I found this book in your share b and And he's like, still up with the ruse? Like, it's, uh I have a feeling, not remembering precisely how this season ends, I have a feeling that he is trying to drag it out a little more to see if she'll go with him. Okay. I feel like that's what I remember is that he's trying to get her to join him. Mm-hmm. And she's sort of but like... But she has to join the Black Whoa. Hood. She can't join her dad. Right. And so okay. it's like he's still, he's still like, how far will you go before he's like, it's me. Well, because she had that the whole thing with Chick where they had to go identify a body and it wasn't Chick. And she's like... I knowingly set him up. That makes me a murderer. Mm -hmm. And us in unison were like, technically, that's an accomplice. That's an accomplice. But <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <sighs> Fangs Fogarty, if ever there were a cinnamon roll. Um, he, Fangs Fogarty does not deserve this. <laughs> it's not, I, it's I such, actually fully forgot oh, yeah. what happens here. It's such, it's such a joke for us. That, if anything, the joke makes him even more, more pathetic. Yeah. It, well, yeah, but, like, it's like, oh, buddy. Poor like, Fang. He doesn't deserve this. You were in Midge Clump's dressing room doing what exactly? We were just talking. I didn't kill her. Didn't you? With this knife you had on your person. Well, again, Reggie is dumber than a box of rocks. And it just is, like, Reggie... Because that's that's the thing that I was saying before, is that Archie is dumb also, but Archie at least understands that he is like beholden in Archie's a way to Hiram. Archie's dumb. Reggie's stupid. Stupid. <laughs> but because Reggie is just like, well, Hiram's paying us, and Archie is like, are you too dumb to understand that that is going to come with like consequences? What that means? Like, what are you? Mm -hmm. This is like not appropriate. What you're doing? What he's asking you to do? In a way that like. Reggie just has no qualms. And I remember, I remember not liking Reggie. And so when some of the stuff in season three happens where, like, he and Veronica are, like... Where he's in, a romantic lead all of a sudden. Well, and he and Veronica are in, like, cahoots about business things and stuff. I remember being really put off at first. And they really had to work to get me into that. And I am now remembering it's Why? because of this, exactly. <laughs> it's 100% because of this nonsense where he just is, like, acting a damn fool. He brings a gun to this, like, riot, essentially, because they're letting Fangs out of prison because they think he do killed... It. They think he killed Midge because they were having, like, a fool around behind Moose's back. And so then all the bulldogs are, like, out for blood. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, ugh. The whole... Well, because... Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. This is, the scene, <laughs> it's just so funny considering that I didn't know who Fangs was. Yeah. And he, he is, like, irrevocably woven Into through the, this, through the fabric of this show and this season the in particular. Yeah. The rich tapestry of Riverdale. Because it's, it's, it's him, Jughead, Sweet Pea, and Tony. Look at me, okay? We stand together so none of us falls. In unity, there is strength. And you need their strength. Yeah. That, like, push their heads together. And, like, Fangs is properly terrified. Super like, terrified. He's, like, crying hard yeah. in the back there. Uh, it's, like, really a And that scene, they went, they went hard. They really did. In that scene. Really like, did. Riverdale, there's a lot that can be said about it. Some of which I agree with, some of which I don't. But you cannot take away the production value. No. Like, and, and the only thing I'll say is that, in total fairness, the entire town thinks that there is a Black Hood copycat. Mm -hmm. And so they could conceivably believe that that is Fangs. I can understand how your imagination can run amok. But, like, I just... 
it's like an immediate riot. Mm -hmm. Like, it's there within, like, an hour. Well, it's the kind of thing, and the less we spend talking about this, the better, but it's, like, the kind of thing that I think when this was happening, I was like, I don't know, this is not believable. And now now it's it's far too believable. believable. And, like, when Hermione and Fred were having their, like, debate, it was, like, every third word was just triggering me. Yeah. I was just like, who, who? It's pretty bad. Like, pretty bad. I don't know how we're going to get by this. No, like, it's pretty bad. So, yeah. Um, oh. Uh, Veronica's Riverdale's newest matchlorette. Is, there, is that what she said? <laughs> no. Oh. Um, her parents are trying to pimp her out. So that storyline to me actually is interesting. And mm-hmm. this does begin the, the first cycle. Because up to now, it's all been... It's all been a lot more even and more of a give and take, but this starts the first real cycle of Veronica being feeling betrayed by Hiram and stepping out on her own mm-hmm. because they basically, Hiram and Hermione are like, the, the boys from the other family are going to come and court you with their like ideas or whatever, what we're going to do going into business. So Hiram has her go out and do this to presumably pick the best idea, which she does. Because but they also do it at the diner. It's like well, this she is the, chooses. Okay, to do it she at chooses the diner. the diner. Okay. But so she, she does pick the best idea because a legal casino is an excellent way to make legitimate money as a mobster, and it, moving into the illegality of it, launder. it's an excellent way to launder money. <laughs> and so that's the thing where she's like, I've thought this out. I even she even goes to. Uh, uh, they keep calling her Attorney McCoy, and I'm like, you can just call her Mrs. McCoy. <laughs> Sierra. And say, Sierra, whatever. <laughs> and so she goes to Sierra. Well, they, they have to make sure we remember she's not the mayor anymore. Sure. <laughs> but she goes to Sierra, and she's like, how do I do this legally? Like, what's the what's the best course of action? She presents this, presumably in a well-detailed business plan to Hiram, and he literally is doesn't even look at anything and is like, this is a bad idea, get out of my face, essentially. And he will not let it slide. And so she basically, at the end, is like, I'm uh, endorsing Fred for mayor, and like I'm campaigning for him, and like later days. And I wish that it had stuck. <laughs> I can't explain to you how much I wish that it had stuck. If you've watched more than one of our episodes, you know how much. <laughs> because it's such a brilliant thing for Veronica to to basically get to the point where she fool me six times shame on me fool me seven or more (laughs) exactly it's it would be so great if she had actually if at any point in the entire run of this show she ever actually met a wall that she couldn't like blindly talk her way out of or something it just is (laughs) So, like, it's moments like this where I'm like, yes, Veronica, that's the right thing to do. But, like, three episodes later, she's going to be like, oh, Daddy, I did this for you. And it's just, what? <laughs> that's my Veronica two cents for today. If we could get, <laughs> if your Veronica opinions could pay us, yeah. we would be rich, I tell you. As if you don't have the same <laughs> Veronica opinions. Um, so... I'm try- I think that's mostly it. Joaquin is back in play. He didn't really do anything, he, but he's back from wherever he was. He was going, okay. So apparently San Junipero is not a real place. I was going to say. Okay. It was a nod, they, it was yeah. a nod to Black Mirror, the but Black Mirror episode. I presume were San Junipero to exist, it would exist in, in America. It would exist in California because that was the thing is Joaquin came back and he was like, I'm getting fangs out of town. I'm, I can take him up to San Junipero. And I was like, where the fuck does you he You exclaimed. You were like, where are we? Because previously, <laughs> straight up was Montreal. <laughs> and now I am confused. <laughs> well, but it's also east of Cin- Centerville. Yeah. <laughs> And so I am very that it's like Springfield <laughs> when yeah. they show the four states like that border Springfield. Of, yeah. I am very that lady. The I am confusion. Yeah, very much, <laughs> very much. <laughs> well, I thought you meant like we were crossing genres into like no, into the Black Mirror because realm. Because I know but... I know that that's that episode's name, but I just presumed it was a real place that was somewhere in Southern California, mm-hmm. like in between San Diego and Los Angeles. And apparently, no, like we're gonna head up to Miami. <laughs> sure, and it's like we're gonna head down to Miami. I just like it. No, 
But regardless, that really threw me for a loop. I was like, <laughs> where are we located? Because it was also like such a snowy winter mm-hmm. where I'm like, where is the snowy winter? Does Riverdale take place in South America? Are they on an opposite <laughs> hemisphere from us? So, um, oh, but in the in the Veronica and her courtships and all that, we meet yeah. Elio. <laughs> He's a real winner, y'all. Get used to him. He's yeah. on the show. Um, Not every episode, but... No, no, no. Enough to really irritate you. So, so Veronica and Archie, I mean, they never really broke up, but they're, like, properly back together. And it appears that Archie and Jughead are... Well, they also never really broke up, mm-hmm. but they're more towards being on the men's. Yeah, well, because basically Archie was... It has been pulling back from the... A little bit from the Hiram stuff. And mm-hmm. if I can say it now, he wants to make his bones with Hiram. <laughs> So sexual sounding. Anyways, um, that was Shadow of a Doubt. Yep. Um, so yeah, we'll check back in later. Mm. I need a better sign off than just being like. <laughs> <laughs>